Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fancy back in today with another fancy football video. Today we are doing a 12 team PPR draft from the second slot. The roster is pretty normal. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide outs, a tight end, flex, kicker defense, and six bench spots. This draft was requested by one of my subscribers whose name is Sean Kelly, so thank you for the support. And before I start the draft, I'd like to ask if you guys could please subscribe, go down below, click that subscribe button because it really mean a lot to me. It's going to mean a lot to you because I'm going to help you guys dominate the draft process. You're going to dominate the whole draft and then you're going to come back week one, dominate week one and the whole regular season by getting all the content where I talk about how, what waiver wire decisions to make, what trades to do, what matchups to do, what, who to stream, all of that jazz. And then the uh, postseason and the playoffs, postseason and the playoffs, so it's the exact same thing. And I'm going to help you do the exact same shit there and then dominate there and win your fantasy football championship. And if you win your fantasy football championship and your league doesn't already have a trophy right now, go down below, check out uh, fantasybros.com. It's a link in my description. Use code Notorious at checkout for 5% off. It would really mean a lot to me. And even if you just went to go look at it and you didn't even buy anything, and it would also mean a lot to me if you clicked that subscribe button. So let's start the draft right now. We have the second pick in a PPR 12-team league. So let's get right into the draft here. So, first pick of the draft was Alvin Kamara, Mr. AK. Now, him, Saquon, or CMC typically go as your first, second, or third overall pick. One of them is going to be the one. Typically, you never see anyone reach for a wide receiver at the one slot unless you're drafting with some crazy people or you're drafting with people who don't know anything about fantasy and they draft Pat Mahomes in the first first pick or the first three picks, which is pretty, could happen actually. It's not that typical, but Depending how smart the people you're playing with are, that could happen. So now we're at the two slot, and this makes it pretty easy for me. I'm just going to go with the guy who I like the most here, and that is Saquon Barkley. Now, I think Christian McCaffrey is slightly safer because he's on a better team. You know his role. You know he's going to run the ball a shit ton. You know he's going to catch a bunch of passes. You also know what Barkley's role is, but you don't know how the offense is going to play. You you would think the Panthers' offense should be pretty steady. It could be like an 8-8 eight and eight team, 9-7 and seven team, a potential playoff team. But you know the the likely the Giants if they keep starting Eli Manning, will win like four games. If they won't stick with Dan, they go with Daniel Jones, maybe they'll win five or six, and they'll be slightly better, which I think is what they should do, but that's not what they're going to do, in my opinion. I think they're going to stick with Eli. And I think Saquon is hindered by that. They, they don't have a lot of wide receivers there. They have Shepard, who's hurt. They have Golden Tate, who's suspended. They have Evan Ingram at the tight end. Their best receiver right now that's going to be on the field week one is likely Evan Ingram and Saquon Barkley, two best wide receivers out there, and Barkley's a running back, and Evan Ingram's a tight end. But I do think that Barkley is your best bet here. I don't want to go too much in depth into that explanation. If you want to figure out who you should draft or me to go through the um, top four guys in the draft, go check out my video that I made a few days ago. It's called Who to Draft at the 101 in Fantasy Football or Who to Draft with the First Pick. That's a pretty informational video where I talk about all four of those guys. So after we have Saquon Barkley, CMC came off the board, followed by DJ, Zeke, D Hop, Lev Bell, Devontae Adams, Michael Thomas, Julio Jones, OBJ, James Cotter. Todd Gurley, Tyler Reek Hill, Nick Chubb, Travis Kelsey, Juju, Mixon, Cook, Evans, Keenan Allen, Adam Thielen. So the first tight end did come with the board at the 2-4. Pretty typical. Kelsey does typically go around the first or second round. The end of the first, middle of the second round. Pretty typical. Todd Gurley went at the 2-1. I don't like Todd Gurley. Due to that arthritis knee, you just avoid injuries. Cooks, I, I'm kind of uh, warming up to liking Cook a bit more. Don't really love him, but I will draft him. But you need to get Madison if you draft him. So now we can just draft another running back and then go wide receiver. So right here, I want to solidify my running back position. Smack it down onto the table. Lay it down hard. You're going to get two solid running back here here in the first two rounds pretty easily here, even at the second, if you draft second in the first round. Okay, sorry there, my bad, I coughed and I didn't want to, I muted the mic, sorry. So, at the second pick of the draft, like I said, you can typically get a good two running back punch back to back here. It's kind of easier towards the back of the draft where you're getting a guy like Chubb, you can go Chubb and Connor, you can get Chubb and Mixon, Mixon and Connor, even Bell and Connor if that's what you want could potentially happen and go your way. But right here, we're going to go with the best running back available, and that is on Johnson. We know, in my opinion, I know on Johnson will be the RB1 of the Detroit Lions. I know he's going to get a lot of touches. I know people are scared of C.J. Anderson, but I'm not scared at all of that motherfucker. I'm not scared at all of C.J. Anderson. I think on Johnson will play like he played last year before he got injured. And if he doesn't get hurt, 
He will be a top running back this season. I can easily see him finishing top 12. He is going to run the ball a lot. I think Detroit is smart enough to know that on Johnson is their best back. He's going to be able to carry them through a lot of games, and I think he can easily set the pace of games early in the game, getting those solid 10-yard rushes off of one attempt. And I think that he will be a guy that is super valuable here late in the draft. And I like, or not late in the draft, I was just the second round, but he used to go in like the third or fourth round. I like on here. Damian Williams is a guy I used to like, but I'm just scared of him because of all this talk of them using RBBC in uh, Kansas City. So this guy went with Pat Mahomes followed by Damian Williams. So Pat Mahomes was taken in the second round, which, like I said, could happen in your at-home draft. I don't advocate for Pat Mahomes to go before the fifth round that or sixth round. That's where I like draft the value at quarterbacks. I don't see any value in the second round. He's not going to be able to carry you. Uh, to that championship because a lot of the time last year when you he carried you, it's because you had him in the 10th round or something and you had other guys. You had your first two running backs. You had two elite running backs. You had an elite running back, elite wide receiver, and that's how you won. Pat Mahomes just helped you and elevated you with that. You're not going to win when you draft him in the second round. It's a lot harder to win in that situation, unless it's a two-quarterback league, but this is not that. So right here, we could go with the three-headed running back approach or just wait and get a wide receiver. And I think I would just wait and get a wide receiver here. Now, I I may be taking some crazy pills just like Mr. AB, but I like him here. I think that now with T.Y. Hilton, it, with the fact that Luck is injured, he has that calf strain that has been lingering since April. And now he has this, it went down to his ankle. Very scary. I don't really like Hilton anymore because if Luck's not in the game, I don't really trust Hilton as much. And AB is a guy who, if he somehow doesn't turn full diva, he plays all 16 games, Derek Carr somehow gets him the ball a bunch of times, I think that Antonio Brown's the best wide receiver in real life, so he should be pretty solid in fantasy, and getting him in the third round should be pretty good for you. Now, if you avoid, if you're just all about avoiding someone who's going to be a diva, who may end up fucking just retiring in the middle of the season because he's crazy. Maybe you avoid AB, but I feel like the value with him in the third round is so immense that I feel like I'm going to feel dumb in the regular season having avoided him here in the third round. So after one with AB, Melvin Gordon came off the board, followed by Leonard Fournette, Amari Cooper, T.Y. Hilton, Devonta Freeman, Aaron Jones, Marlon Mack, Zach Ertz, George Kittle. Stefan Diggs, Chris Carson, David Montgomery, Julian Edelman, Derek Henry, Josh Jacobs, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Chris Godwin, Philip Lindsay, A.J. Green. So, let me talk about some of these picks here. Now, Melvin Gordon, like I said, you want to avoid him because he's going to likely miss a couple of games. Maybe it's two games. Maybe it's eight games he's going to miss this season because he's holding out and he doesn't seem to be wanting to just sign some contracts for a lot of money even though because he wants even more money even though he's an injury prone back. I don't understand it. Uh, let me talk about something else. Travis Kelsey, Ertz, and Kittle all gone before the end of the third round. Typically, uh, Kelsey goes the earliest and then Ertz and Kittle typically go around the third, fourth round. You rarely ever see them go and fall into the fifth round. So we could either go with a running back or a wide receiver here. And I like the wide receiver value here slightly better than the running back value. I'm not all in on Mark Ingram, so I'd rather just avoid him and go with a wide receiver here. So we're going to just go with the best wide receiver available. Now, this is all up to your interpretation. Some people do like Cooper Cup because of how great he was last year. Now, he tore his ACL more than halfway through last year, the end of his campaign, torn ACL, and he will likely suit up week one against the Panthers. And that does scare me. When you tear your ACL the year before, and you're not Adrian Peterson, it's hard to come back and play strong the whole rest of the season or come out strong like AP did. And I don't really believe that's what's going to happen. Some people do like Cup, and I do see some value in him, but I'm not one who really likes drafting him, and I just avoid him. So it's really between Galladay, Lockett, Calvin Ridley or Boyd. Now, immediately right off the rip, I'm going to just avoid going Kenny Galladay in this situation because we already have carry on. And you don't want to load up on two players, typically on a team that, in my opinion, isn't all that great. Now, I think the Lions could be a lot better than last year if Stafford ends up being able to stay healthy. He got hurt towards the end of last year, hurt his back. And if carry on can stay healthy and the wide receiver core is good, then obviously the Lions will be pretty good if their defense can play. But there's too many, it's too confusing, and they're in such a good division that I would just avoid Galladay here when we have carry on. If we didn't have carry on, I'd happily go Galladay there. So it's between Lockett and Ridley. Now, I like both of these guys. Lockett is going to be the wide receiver one on his team. 
Okay, and that obviously has some value inherently because even though they're a run-heavy team, they're still going to be passing the ball. He's going to get six targets a game, seven targets a game potentially. It says that he's projected to only get four or, f- or five targets a game. I can see him being like around six or seven a game. And since Doug Baldwin is gone, now they have a bunch of mediocre wide receivers around him. DJ or DK Metcalf, probably the best of those other guys. David Moore, a bunch of other guys. So I do like Lockett since he's the wide receiver one on that team. Or you go with the wide receiver two on Atlanta, who really looked to have quite a breakout season last year. At some one game, they stopped covering Julio Jones' double coverage and double covered Ridley because of how, how good he was. The one thing that worries me is the Falcons' love for Sanu. Sanu is a great wide receiver. I think he will hinder Ridley's growth. So I think, or I also like Boyd here, but I think I'm just going to go with Lockett because I think Lockett is the most safe of these guys. I think Lockett and Boyd are probably the most safe. Ridley is probably the most risky. And we were doing with Antonio Brown, who's kind of risky. So we're going to go with a bit of safety here. So after we went Lockett, Kenny Galladay came off the board, followed by Mark Ingram. So typically here, we typically go for, in the first five rounds, normally you see me take three running backs and two wide outs, or unless there's a tight end in there, but typically three running backs and two wide outs. But at this time, I'm going to go with three wide outs because I see so much value in... Tyler Boyd here. I really do like Boyd. It was hard deciding between Boyd, him, and Ridley. And I think that Boyd, at the end of the day, may have a better season than Lockett, but he is on a worse team. The Bengals are a team that could be a dumpster fire. They have a new coach, so you would think they'd play better than under Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis is a terrible coach, and Tyler Boyd is a great wide receiver. He And the, uh, one of the arguments that's against Boyd is that he played better when A.J. Green was on the field. And yes, if you look at the numbers, you saw that. But he was also playing with a backup quarterback at times, whereas when A.J. Green was healthy, there was no backup quarterback. It was Andy Dalton. I think Andy Dalton and Tyler Boyd can develop a connection, and the Cincinnati Bengals will have a solid wide receiver connection. A.J. Green will likely come back a few weeks into the season. So if you're scared of that, then you just can bench Boyd for the first couple of weeks. But you're going to feel dumb when you do that because Boyd's going to blow up the first couple of weeks. Week. So after we went Tyler Boyd, Cooper Cup, came off the board, followed by Sony Michelle, Calvin Ridley, James White, O.J. Howard, Aaron Rodgers, Tariq Cohen, uh, Tariq Cohen, Tevin Coleman, D.J. Moore, Deshaun Watson, Jarvis Landry, Austin Eckler, Kenyon Drake, Mike Williams, Miles Sanders, Baker Mayfield, Robbie Anderson, Hunter Henry, Evan Ingram, Christian Kirk, one, two, three, four quarterbacks already taken off the board, one, two, three, four, five, six tight ends already off the board. But right here, we need to, since we already went with three wide receivers, and we need to clamp down on some running backs, probably back-to-back here. So we're going to go with our first running back here. Now, it used to be I loved Lamar Miller, but now with Duke coming to town, and I think he can, Foreman was, the hope with Foreman was that he would maybe get 40% of the touches on the team. They shipped Foreman off. Foreman wasn't there for Houston. They didn't like him. They shipped him off. They got Duke. And now Duke is dealing with this hamstring injury, but I think he will be available for week one. And I'm just scared that Lamar Miller may, may be a 50-50 split, maybe 60-40 split in Miller's favor. But even then, I don't even find that ideal because Miller's not much of a pass catching back. He was more of a guy that was safe, get you nine to 12 points every single week. You'd happily have him as your flex. But now, With Duke coming to town, it's not just the Lamar Miller show, so I'm kind of scared of that, and he's not much of a pass-catching back, which obviously is worse in a PPR format. So we're going to go with Latavius Murray here, the running back two on the New Orleans Saints, a guy that has the upside to become... He wouldn't become the running back one on the team because Alvin Kamara is solidified in that role, but Alvin Kamara is not a workhorse back. Alvin Kamara will be out. It'll be like a... Alvin Kamara will be out on a, a bunch of plays where they'll put Latavius Murray in. You'll see Latavius Murray hawk a touchdown from him all the time. Just like what happened when Mark Ingram was on the team. It was Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. The value with Latavius Murray is a solid flex every single week. A guy that's going to get 10, 11, 12 touches a game. Probably run for 50, 60 yards and be a guy that catches maybe one or two passes, which is a solid flex option. But he could also score that touchdown in those games. And I think if Alvin Kamara was to get hurt, he would be a top 12 back very easily. He'd be getting, likely, a lot more of the rushes. They have some other backs behind Murray, but it's nothing to be so excited about. They would run with Murray as the workhorse on that team while Alvin Kamara was hurt. And I believe that Latavius Murray would benefit a lot from that. But we don't hope for injuries here. I'm not hoping for the injury. I know I can start him as my flex every single week, so I'm fine drafting him here. After with Latavius Murray... Alshon Jeffrey came off the board, followed by Jared Cook. So, the beautiful bastard in Rashad Penny did end up falling to us. And I love me some Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny is the running back, too, on Seattle now. I think that 
while right now it seems like Chris Carson's going to get two-thirds of the touches, you need to understand that when you're drafting Penny here, he's your one, two, three, fourth running back on our team. He's going to be riding the pine for a bit. You could potentially start him as your flex week one if you're feeling dangerous. You're feeling like Penny is going to eat against the Bengals, which I'm feeling could happen because the Bengals' defense is kind of trash. So what I'm thinking is that Penny, right now, it's looking like a 2-3 or a two three split, so 70-30, I believe. Two-thirds split in the favor of Mr. Carson, but I think that Penny could really emerge and make it more 50-50. It could be 50-50. They're saying that uh, Chris Carson's going to be the pass catching back. He's going to catch 50 passes, which kind of worries me for Penny, but at the same time, you're drafting him the seventh round. He's the value to become the running back one on the most run-heavy team in the NFL, and even if he isn't the running back one, he's the running back two on the most run-heavy team in the NFL, so he could still be seeing 10, 11 uh, attempts a game, and there's just such high value in that, so I like Penny here. After we went with Rashad Penny, Lamar Miller can't the board, followed by Andrew Luck, Darius Guys, Dante Pettis, Geronimo Allison, Alex or Allen Robinson, Matty Ice, Drew Brees, Carson Wentz, Will Fuller, Larry Fitz, Kareem Hunt, Rolls Royce Freeman, Darrell Henderson, Vance McDonald, Jordan Howard, DD Westbrook, Kyla Murray, Sammy Watkins, and Curtis Samuel. So now it's our pick in the eighth round. Currently, let's see, one, two, three, four. Wait, wait, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine quarterbacks off the board out of 12. So three teams, including myself, don't have a quarterback. Let's see how many tight ends went. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tight ends already went. And I don't like Ebron. I think Ebron is going to be a disappointment this year. Now, last year he played amazing because Jack Doyle was out. Now, Jack Doyle's back. Jack Doyle is the better pass blocker. Luck, if healthy, likes Doyle. We know that. We don't. We know that he loves throwing it to the tight end, so he will probably throw it to Ebron. Ebron will probably score a few touchdowns, but I'm just avoiding him because I don't think he's going to be the same as he was last year, and he, it does go a lot higher typically, maybe in the sixth round of a lot of drafts, and I'm just avoiding him at that cost. So, right here, we are going to snag. We currently have one. We got one, two, three, four running backs and three wide receivers. So right here, we could go with the quarterback, but I don't really love Cam all that much. I will draft him in some leagues. I'd rather just get a running back here that I think could have a breakout season. Now, I don't necessarily love this pick. He's not a guy that I'm targeting in every single draft like Penny is, like Murray is, like a guy like Rolls-Royce Freeman is who went at the... 8-3. 8-3. I'm not necessarily targeting these guys in this guy in every single draft, but I will take him when I see fit and when he falls to me, and that is Ronald Jones. Now, Ronald Jones isn't the RB1 on Tampa Bay. It's going to probably be Barber, but Ronald Jones, he need, they drafted him highly last year. He was a guy that was being drafted highly in fantasy football last year as well. He has been... He carries training camp momentum over. He's been He did good in the first preseason game. Uh, no, never mind. He rushed four times for 18 yards, which is okay. One target for five yards. Now, he was quiet in game two, rushed seven yards on two carries in Miami. So, who knows how he's going to be used this year. He's used an eighth-round running back, and you need to just hope that he becomes the RB1 on the team. In reality, Peyton Barber really is not that good. 3.1 yards per carry, I believe, last year. That's just really not that good. Ronald Jones was just terrible last year, and I think that Ronald Jones should be able to be better than Peyton Barber, who's very bad, and I think that Ronald Jones could end up being the running back one on Tampa Bay, so that's why we draft him here. After we with Ronald Jones, Stoney Shepard came off the board, followed by the first defense, Chicago Bears don't draft a defense this early. So now we're going to snag a wide receiver and then likely go with a tight end quarterback combo in the 10th, 11th round. 10th and 11th round. So we are just going to go with a wide receiver that I really like back here in the draft, and that is Mr. MVS. Now, Marcus Valdez-Scantling will likely, oh, oh my God, will likely be the wide receiver two in targets on that team. I believe that it's going to be Adams at one, then him, and then Geronimo Allison. Now, him and Geronimo Allison will probably have a similar year, Valdez-Scantling and Geronimo Allison. Geronimo Allison is the slot guy, MVS is the outside the numbers guy, Aaron Rodgers likes targeting outside the numbers. He's one of the more effective quarterbacks at throwing it there, where which is pretty difficult for some quarterbacks. It's like Mitch Trubisky when he has to throw the ball to the left. A lot of guys, like, like Mitch Trubisky can't do that, but Aaron Rodgers can easily throw it to the outside. I don't even know how that makes sense. That doesn't make much sense, but I know that MVS will be pretty solid this year. I like him. He's going to be the wide receiver two on Green Bay. I also like Marvin Jones. I think he could even be better than Kenny Galladay in when push comes to shove at the end of the year, and he's going so much later. But I do think I'm getting a guy on a better offense. We already have carry on on Detroit, and I think that MVS will be solid this season. So after with MVS, David Njoku can't board, followed by Cam Newton, Eric Ebron, LaShawn McCoy, Corey Davis, Kalen Balaz, Jalen Samuels, Jared Goff, 
Marvin Jones, Famous Jameis, Duke Johnson, Russell Wilson, Carlos Hyde, who may be cut, DK Metcalf, Cortland Sutton, Nikhil Harry, Matt Burita, Emmanuel Sanders, Deshaun Jackson, Phillip Rivers. Now, I think Nikhil Harry's value has kind of plummeted after Flash Gordon's emergence now that he is free, and he is a guy that you could draft now this late now. He's not going to go this late in your real draft, let me tell you that. He's going to end up going like the sixth round, and you're not going to want to pay that price. That's too high of a price for him, in my opinion. So right now, we're just going to we're gonna actually get him when the value is hot right now and just draft him here in the 10th round. Typically, we have, wait, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five running backs. One, two, three, four receivers. No, we have one, two, three. Yeah, we have four receivers. Five running backs. So we're not going to snag him here, but I would be willing to snag him here. I'm just going to go with my tight end quarterback combo. So right here, you go with safety in Austin Hooper, a guy who will probably score you six, seven, eight points every single game. Six, seven, eight points every single game. And I think that he will have that solid upside in Atlanta, well, not really even upside, but you know Matt Ryan likes to throw the ball to him. You know if he's healthy, he'll be a solid option, a safe option. Or you can go and be greedy like me, a guy that likes to go with the unknown. And it's not really unknown because Mark Andrews was pretty solid last year, but now he's the tight end one. It's not Hayden Hurst. He's the number one tight end on the team. Lamar Jackson likes throwing it to him. He nabbed two targets for 11 yards. That doesn't really matter. That doesn't really affect me because in reality, he's playing only a couple of drives and with the first team now. Lamar Jackson is going to target him a lot. Lamar Jackson can't, is not one who can really throw the ball super far accurately. So, He's going to easily be able to throw it, check down to Mark Andrews. Young quarterbacks love their tight ends, and Mark Andrews will be great. Mark Andrews will be pretty solid this year. So after we went with Mark Andrews, you'll probably get him in around, around 12, but I'm being safe getting him in around 10. So after we went Mark Andrews, Devin Singletary, Kenneth Board, followed by Damian Harris, double AFC East running back, rookie running backs in a row. Pretty neat to see that. So now we're going to snag our quarterback. And since we're with Mark Andrews, I'm going to go with the combo, the wombo combo of Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Lamar Jackson, I, I have developed a man crush for this man in fantasy football. I think that Lamar Jackson may end up being a top 10, top 8 quarterback in fantasy. I think I draft, I've drafted him a bunch in the past, but now I'm starting to really see the value in him. I, if you watched the last preseason game, he played pretty good, and he even ran in a touchdown that got called back that was 20 yards. He looked like a running back. He hit the juke on some guy, hopped into the end zone, and it looked amazing. Then there was holding or some other type of penalty on the play that called it back, but he looks great. He's a running back that is a quarterback. He will get you 60 rush yards every single game. He could run for 1,000 yards like he's Michael Vick. All right. So I like Lamar Jackson. If he could figure out how to throw the ball better, He's going to be a great asset in fantasy, and even with him not being able to throw the ball so well, he's still great because he was great last year when you had him in fantasy once Flacco got the got the uh, the bench. So after we went Lamar Jackson, Hooper can't the board, followed by James Washington, L.A. Rams, Big Ben Roethlisberger, Peyton Barber, Dante Moncrief, Delaney Old Man Walker, Justin or uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, Col- Golden Tate, Kiki Cootie, A.P. Anthony Miller, T.J. Hawkinson, Chargers Defense, Alexander Madison, Paris Campbell, Ravens Defense, Tyrell Williams, Devin Funches, Tom Brady, and it's a 12-team league, so you don't need two quarterbacks, so we're going to load up on some more running back depth here and go with Justin Jackson. Now, Justin Jackson, he will have no value the second Melvin Gordon signs, but right now, with Melvin Gordon holding out, he will have likely eight games of being the RB1 or 2 on the team, depending if how much they use him with Eckler. Now, last year, we saw they used him a decent amount when Melvin Gordon was injured, and he was a solid option in fantasy football when Melvin Gordon was injured. So you would think he'd be a solid option when Melvin Gordon is holding out. So I like him here in the 12th round. After went with Justin Jackson, Jameson Crowder can't board, followed by Justice Hill. So now we can snag either one more running back or one more wide receiver. We're not getting two tight ends or two quarterbacks. So one running back, one, two, three, four. Five, six running backs, and one, two, three, four. Four wide receivers, so we could get one more wide receiver here. And I don't think Josh Gordon will ever fall to you here. I'm being honest with you. I don't think he will. But right now, maybe some people don't know that he's uh, getting reinstated into the NFL. Now, he could end up smoking that dank weed, you know. (laughs) You fellow kids, you know about that dank weed. So we may just go with Josh Gordon here. Uh, he's been reinstated, and we're gonna just go with him here. He, now, I don't believe I don't believe he'll ever be 
this late in your draft. But if he is, I would snag him pretty easily here. I think that he could be a wide receiver three, but I think and not like the wide receiver three in fantasy, but like a top 32 wide receiver. But he may end up being way overdrafted for that. He may end up going the fifth, sixth, seventh round because people love them some Josh Gordon. So I would pr- probably avoid him at that price. But right here in the 13th round, I like that price. So I think with Josh Gordon, Jarek McKinnon, Caleb the board, followed by my Minnesota Vikings. I almost just had a stroke there. The Minnesota Vikings, Jimmy Garoppolo, Dickie Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, Ito Smith, Greg the Legs are line, Justin Tucker the fucker, Greg Olson, Cleveland Browns, Darwin Thompson, Harrison Bucker, John Brown, Deion Lewis, Kyle Fairbairn, Dallas Cowboys, Jordan Injured, Reprone, Reed, Will Lutz, Stefan Gostowski, Houston Texans defense. So now we're going to go with our defense. The way you're going to draft the defense, you're going to go on Google, okay? Type in NFL schedule week one, and then you're going to find a defense playing against a shitty offense, and that's the defense you draft. So the Eagles are playing against the Redskins week one, and I don't think the Redskins are that good of an offense, so we'll go with the Eagles. After with the Eagles, Jake Elliott came off the board, followed by Kyle Rudolph, and now we get a kicker, and we'll go with Robbie Gould. After with Robbie Gould, Giorgio Trevecchio came off the board, followed by Dante Foreman, Tony Pollard, who is Zeke's handcuff. If you draft Zeke, you must draft Tony Pollard like this team did, because because if Zeke misses a couple games, Tony Pollard will fit correctly in there. Dak has talked him up. The team has talked him up. He will be a solid option here. Now, once Zeke is on the field, you're rarely going to see Tony Pollard. But as, when Zeke's gone, Tony Pollard is a must draft. After with Tony, after he took Tony Pollard, Michael Badger came off the board, followed by Matt Prater. New England Patriots defense, Michael Gallup, Gio Bernard, Denver Broncos, and old man Jimmy Graham. So our finishing starting lineup is Lamar Jackson at the quarterback position. Our two running backs are Barkley and Carrion Johnson. Our two wideouts are A.B. and Tyler Lockett. Our tight end is Mock Andrews. Our wide receiver slash running back slash tight end, who is our flex, actually, because I don't know why I read it like that. Our flex is Tyler Boyd. Our kicker is Robbie Gould. Our defense is the Eagles against the Redskins. And you could drop them week after week one and pick up a new defense week two. That's how the strategy works. And then our bench is comprised of Latavius Murray, Rashad Penny, Ronald Jones, MVS, Justin Jackson, and Josh Gordon. So thank you guys all for watching the video. If you did not enjoying, please click that subscribe button that's down below or on your screen right now. It's Johnny Manziel. You can click on that. Click on the click on the subscribe button, then click on the notification bell to get notified for every single video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the videos that come out today or if this is the last video of the day. Watch tomorrow's videos. They're all going to be great. I love you all. Goodbye, guys.